Hello, BookTube! How's it going? Um, I've got a tag for you today. It's a random 20 questions tag from Steve Donahue. And I actually just uh, just filmed this. And, uh, quite the epic. It actually was, uh, ended up being 50 minutes long. Uh, so, rivaled even uh, the great Jason Harrigan of I Was in Bookland. Um, and then I listened back to it and realized that I forgot that the iMac internal microphone is atrocious and I can barely hear myself and um, I'm about the only person who can actually understand what I'm saying at the best of times and so terrible microphone I couldn't even understand myself and so I'm here doing it again uh, with the uh, plug-in USB microphone that I have um, so hopefully this is better well, shiny dome too um, but still with special guest boy uh, Funny enough, he was on the other side, <laughs> got everything set up, and then decided to relocate. But yeah, just uh, purely here for for Steve. If he ever watches this video, just uh, marveling the glory of boy, as uh, my uh, two-year-old Jindo pup. He's still pretty much a puppy. He's like, uh, I think they say the puppy stage is to about four for this kind of breed. Um, Jindo is quite a quite a unique breed. Um, you don't see a lot of them in North America. Um, there's a few, but there's not too many. He's actually um, a rescue. He's actually an international humane society rescue. Um, came from uh, Korean Pub Mill. Um, had quite the quite the uh, the early life. He uh, first came to Ottawa, and then then he came to Kingston, and then. Uh, when they did the, uh, is it the, the heartworm test or something? One of the, one of the dogs that he was transported with tested positive. Um, so then they had to quarantine all the dogs that arrived with that dog. Um, so they had to send him back up to Ottawa because uh, the Kingston Humane Society just doesn't have the facilities to quarantine. So we went back up to Ottawa, got the all clear, came back. Uh, we went to see him, and uh, yeah, we ended up adopting him a year ago, last July. Um, it was quite great. We we went in actually, and they were like, "There's six people already in line, and we might not even look at your application, but you should put it in anyway." And the next day, they call up, say, "Have you? Did you actually go and like meet him?" And we we like we didn't go into the cave, but we. Uh, into into his face, but um, we saw him. And then yeah, the next day we went to meet him properly, and next thing we know, they're giving him to us. Um, yeah, he was a, he was a, he was very much a favorite from the shelter as well. So um, it was quite emotional <laughs> when we got him, but he's such a great dog. So lovely, and he's come such a long way. He was such a, he was such a, he's still a little bit of a scaredy, but he wouldn't even, he wouldn't even go for a walk when we first got him, and we had to carry him outside. And uh, my the first walks that I did with him were like two hours of trying to coax him around the around the corner. Um, but well, actually, uh, the great thing is we lived in an area with lots of dogs, and he loves dogs so much that what the, f the thing that really coaxed him into walking a little bit was actually just following other dogs <coughs> and then slowly he realized the world isn't as scary a place as he thought it was and he's like quite adventurous now he goes on all goes on all kinds of adventures uh, um, we, we we lived in the we lived in the city we lived in Kingston when we first got him and, and now we live in the countryside so it's actually it has a ton more space. He can free roam of the house um, when we're around. So he actually uh, it's qu quite the nice life. Anyway, I, I try to make this one quicker, and I'm going on all about the star of the show. But uh, I think he just wants to go to bed. Maybe I don't know. I'm gonna go after this. I'll go and read in bed. But uh, yeah, let's get on with the questions. Number one, what is the nearest place to you that's so famous everyone knows it, and how near is it? So, 
I mean, I live right close to a UNESCO heritage site, uh, the Rideau, Rideau Canal. Um, it connects Kingston to Ottawa. Um, it's really, really just, just down the road. I've got a uh, Jones Falls lock, um, and Chaffee's lock, and there's another one. I can't remember. I should have looked it up. Um, uh, so that's the UNESCO heritage, but I don't know. We don't. In Canada here, we don't really think of a lot of stuff as that famous. If you ever meet a Canadian and they'll mention something in Canada, um, they'll probably explain it in great detail because they just assume you don't know nothing about it. Um, and there's the Thousand Islands just down the road too. Um, most famous for the salad dressing. Um, but So I would say the one thing, the one thing that I'm close to close to um that it's undeniably famous world famous is niagara falls and we're about 290 kilometers away i don't know what's that like 250 miles just under um we're yes yeah, so we're about it's about four hours drive without traffic <laughs> you have to go through toronto so it's probably closer to five hours when you're all said and done um yeah, fantastic Niagara Falls. If you ever go to Niagara Falls, definitely recommend if you're staying overnight, book into one of the uh, the hotels that overlooks the falls. Get a, a falls like overlook falls room. Fantastic. You can usually get some deals. We we, we did it with um, we did it on mother's uh, my mother in law's uh, birthday. I think it was one year. Uh, about four, three, four years ago, probably four years ago. Um, it was fantastic, yeah. Uh, just waking up, just having that right there, it's so good. Um, and the, the soundproof rooms and stuff, so it's like you don't, you don't really hear it. Um, it's yeah, it's spectacular just to like have that view and just to spend a lot of time with that view. Um, we got a you can get pretty good deals on the, you can get good deals on the site and stuff, so it's not even like it's the it's a Probably a four star hotel. Huh? It's not, not too bad. Um, downtown Niagara Falls is like, if you go, <laughs> just to clarify, if you come to Niagara Falls, come to Canada. Canadian side is so much nicer. It's so much better than the American side. The views you get are so much better. Um, we're more chill. Made in the mist. I mean, it's probably the same. Made in the mist. <laughs> or it's probably the same. We have the bit where you can go in behind, the falls though as well. I can't remember how much it costs. These are a long way off. I haven't done that. But there is a bit where you can drop down. You can, I think you can get in behind the falls too. I don't think you can do that in upstate New York. Maybe. I don't know. Um, it's just so much nicer. Niagara Falls itself. The town. is like an amusement park kind of thing. Downtown. Um, pitch and putt. We played down there. Um, I guess so. <laughs> if you're in America... You're not coming to Canada anytime soon, though, and likewise, I'm not going to America anytime soon. Don't know, don't know when the borders are going to be open. But, um, I don't even actually what's it. I don't even know if it's open to. Is it open to anyone outside of uh, Canada? Yeah, I don't know. I actually don't know what the situation is. My parents are supposed to visit September, and they're not now. Um, but anyway, if you get over this, Niagara Falls. Everyone's heard of that. Number two, have you ever had a paper cut so bad you thought you might die of it? Not quite die of it, but I've had loads of paper cuts. Um, I used to work as a mailman. Um, letter, the, sh the ends of the letters are sh really sharp, and you can sorting and just moving them around and stuff. You, just, you get cuts there, cuts there a lot. Um, the worst ones are when it gets right into your nail, right there, just in some blood. <laughs> so yeah, I've had a ton, ton, and. Um, I'm currently working in shipping and I'm more, things are more uh, in wire baskets or uh, cardboard boxes and so I've got cardboard, cardboard scrapes. It used to be worse when I worked in the storeroom at Toys R Us actually, because everything's cardboard there. So the lighting was terrible. Uh, yeah, I built one there. And so there. It's faded now. But yeah, I get I, all over my arms. If you haven't, if you haven't meet me in person, I probably got. Uh, you see my arms probably just got a ton of cuts um, it's fine now it's, it's all good 
Uh, but yeah, I should try and get on with these. Um, number three, have you ever found anything generally valuable in used book you bought? No. Sadly, no. Um, just, I love the little inscriptions. Um, especially in the older books. Uh, everyone used to just, uh, for any kind of um, present or thing, use the little inscription on the book. It's, it's so nice. Um, I found things like uh, heritage series of stamps and newspaper clippings, so things relevant to the books, but never anything. Never found money, and I've never, um, not even my own, I never, being a, um, a true Scot, I, I, I keep my money close. Uh, never used it as a bookmark. Used everything else under the sun. Never money though. Um, number four, have you ever read, met, or married Jacques Barzun? Um, prior to this question, I never actually heard of Jacques Barzun. Um, great name, and I looked him up. Very impressive fellow. Uh, sounds like something I should should read. Cultural criticism and all that kind of stuff is right up my alley. And he has quite the prolific career and writing on some stuff is very interesting so yeah I should check him out number five aside from your pets what is a specific non-human animal you see most often squirrels every time I look outside there's a squirrel running around somewhere um we live in the country squirrels um bunnies chipmunks he goes crazy for them he oh the bunnies and the chipmunks he he's obsessed so, he, <laughs> He'll flat out just like he doesn't bark much. He only really barks at me or my wife, and usually, he usually barks at us when he feels like he's being left out. Um, but he will make noises. He whines. He whines at other dogs if he <laughs> if he sees a dog that he can't interact with. He'll he'll whine so hard, pine for them so hard. Um, but yeah, he makes grunting and other noises. Generally just like stares <laughs> and usually makes us go chase them away if they're being particularly uh, lingering. <laughs> um, have you ever been inside a cathedral? If more than one, do you have a favorite? Um, been in so many cathedrals. Um, yeah, I grew up in uh, Wiltshire, England, so. Salisbury Cathedral is one I used to see quite often. Fun spot for that. Um, I lived in Barcelona for a year, so um, not La Segura de Familiana. I don't know if it's that. Is it? Yeah, I guess that's Cathedral. Um, not a big fan of La Segura de Familiana. It's um, to, to a pun on the, on the gallery's name. It's it's gaudy. I, I find it gaudy. It's it's too much. It's too much going on on the outside. It's too many tourists. It's you have to pay to get in. I think. You have to book to get in. Um, it's the, the area of town that it's in is kind of stupid. It's it's a lot of roads and stuff. <coughs> it's all really clustered. However, Barcelona Cathedral is right in the center. center. Massive pedestrian area. So even if, if there's tons of tour groups, um, there's lots of room to get around. You can get in pretty easily. There's these little cloister rooms all set up differently um, that you can... See, um, people still go there to to pray. I don't know. Do they do that as Cathedral of Familiar? I don't know. It's it's like people's place to go pray. Um, it's the architecture is lovely. Um, yeah, it's much better. But possibly my favorite cathedral um, is Hereford Cathedral. I used to, I lived near to Hereford for about three years, from the age of sixteen to nineteen. Um, well, what's really neat about Harrow Cath Cathedral is it has, I think, the oldest surviving uh, map of Mundi, um, which is quite a claim to fame. Um, it's incredible. It's um, so map of Mundi, if you don't know, they're basically medieval maps of the world. And so it's actually just incredible to see what their perception of the world was in, I guess, uh, this one day's 1300s. What their, uh, so yeah, pre-enlightenment. Pre um, yeah, just pre... I mean, 1300 is pretty uh, new world. So, uh, you know, Columbus and Cook and uh, Ma uh, Magellan and stuff. Uh, even Cartier was... Yeah, even Cartier. So all that was, uh, that was late 1400s, 1500s. So, 
Yeah, very interesting map to look at. Uh, number seven, have you ever been actually seeing and hearing things delirious? Um, not that I remember, but apparently when I was a, a small child, not sure really how old I was, um, my mother said I had a fever and she came in and I was uh, just kind of in the corner, just being like, get them off me, get them off me, get the spiders off me or something. And um, I have no recollection of that at all, but apparently I was completely out of it. Um, number eight, uh, do you have blood relatives who read for pleasure? Uh, yes, my mum, I'm sure does. She used to. She used to read Mills and Boone and stuff like that and Agatha Christie. Um, the, the Mills and Boone romance novels and Agatha Christie and stuff like that. Um, at least one of my sisters reads for pleasure. Um, my dad reads. Does he get pleasure out of it? I don't know, but he reads. He loves, he loves, uh, he loves history. I think. And, uh, he likes reading, he likes reading about like things like Everest, Everest expeditions. Um, and he has like a book on Man on the Moon book or something. Um, so he reads that kind of stuff, non fiction. Um, and then aunties and uncles and cousins, I'm sure, read for pleasure. I don't speak to them a lot, so I'm not sure. Um, number nine, how many species have you smooched smack dab on the lips? Um, dog, obviously. Uh, it's daily smooching. Um, cat. Cat smooch is not so good, not so nice. Especially if they get a little tongue action in there, it's, it's really not as pleasurable as a dog smooch. Um, human, human obviously, I've got a wife who daily smooches for my wife. Um, and goat, <laughs> goat, a goat smooch is very nice. If you ever get to the chance to hang out with goats, do. They're so loving. You could cuddle goats for all day. They're they're so affectionate. They're very aggressive in their uh, they're very aggressive in their affection. But you get one, you get you get to know them, you get to know them. They'll they'll give you so much, so much. Um. Ten. Do you ever listen to the radio? Any favorite program as a person? Uh, yeah, I used to listen to the radio all the time. No, I, not so much. Just don't have as much time these days. Um, when I lived in the UK, big fan of Radio 4. Um, even like the comedy was quite good, like news clips and stuff. Um, just the current affairs program. I used to even listen to Woman's Hour. Woman's Hour can be quite good sometimes. Um, uh, the afternoon, yeah, there was a, what is it, for the, for the news program at the 5 o'clock, whatever that was called. It was quite good. I like the more, um, I like the more in depth magazines type news programs. Um, but now I'm in Canada, I, when I first moved to Canada, I religiously listened to CBC every day, pretty much left it on all day, even as it was repeating its news cycles and stuff. Um, they also have a really good news quiz, it's quite funny. Um, I haven't listened to that for a while, actually. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but uh, all in the day and in the afternoon is quite good. But my favourite show is um, As It Happens with, uh, I think, Jeff Douglas and Carol Off. Well, Carol Off and Jeff Douglas. Let's be honest, Carol Off is the amazing uh, person in that, in the duo. Uh, she's a great journalist and been doing it for for a long time now. I don't know why she's in her 70s, I think. So. Oh, you going? You going to that side there? <laughs> we can, we can uh, adjust for the star of the show. There you go. Yeah, you like that side better, didn't you? Um, yeah, Carol, she must be doing it almost 50 years now. Um, she's, she's, she's one of the best uh, interview, interviewers. She's, she's so good. She gets a lot out of, a lot of, a lot out of interviews. Um, that's really good. It has a little bit of comedy, too, which, like, if you're talking about current affairs, it gets really, really depressing. So a little bit of comedy. I mean, they always have, like, some kind of weird Canadian quirk story. Um, or not even Canadian. Sometimes it's just like from America or whatever. There was most. There was a really famous one. The guy wanted to take his donkey. There was a, a feud between the guy had a donkey and it was apparently it ate or damaged someone's car, and then the guy wanted to take the donkey into court. I think this was somewhere in America. If you look it up or something, you can look it up on YouTube. I'm pretty sure it, it, 
it's just this guy talking about his donkey, but he refers to it as an ass. <laughs> it's one of it's crazy, but it's it's legendary. Um, there's always some sort of like loon rescue story. As other things. Often, actually, the better ones. Often, the better ones aren't Canadian. They're Americans or somewhere else, and and they're. It's just like a crazy story, and they're actually really excited to be talking to Canada. <laughs> like, oh, Canada's interested in this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's really good. Anyway, so get up, get on with this a bit more. Um. Have you ever been to the Eiffel Tower, the Lane Tower of Pisa, or the Louvre? I have been to the Lane Tower of Pisa when I was three. Uh, we went in nineteen eighty-seven for a family trip. I got onto the ground floor and was like, "Nope, not going any higher. This is crazy." Um, my mother, who has a vertigo, so I'm sure that had nothing to do with it, bravely said, "No, I won't go up top." Um, this is when you could still go right to the top. They, they, I think they shut it just after that. Uh, don't know if they really haven't done it at all, but um, yeah, she uh, she stayed outside with me. We watched, um, but yeah, it's 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 funny that it's funny that they're celebrating a bad job. But anyway. And as for like I have time to Louvre, no, I have never been to Paris. I've been to a lot of I've been to pretty much the whole of the west of France and a little bit of the east. But um, I've never been to Paris, and I'm kind of I'm a little bit obsessed with the idea of visiting every single part of Paris. Um, but sorry, I've ever been to France, but not going to Paris, just like snubbing Paris. Um, but I, lo I generally prefer small towns. I'm not a big city kind of person. Uh, I don't mind visiting a big city, but occasionally. But I'm much more interested in little s towns, mar little markets, and. Um, Usually small towns have something that are just like one thing that they're really famous for and sometimes it's something odd or and I, I just love that. I love like discovering the little quirks of towns and small town people if you're nice, if you're respectful, if if you're not if you don't you don't come in with like a big city attitude and being, Oh, it's so quaint. Oh, they're so uh they're so provincial and whatever you know, don't be don't be disrespectful and Generally, small town people are, are very polite. Um, but yeah, I've I mean maybe I'm just I I live I I came from a small town, but I generally when I've been anywhere, I just uh, very respectful, keep kind of quiet, and and you know go into a bar or you go into a cafe or whatever, you just call yourself. And I think when uh, definitely in Canada though, when people hear my accent, even though it's not super <laughs> British anymore um, and they, they generally opens up a lot of conversation because they're quite interested where I'm from <clears throat> it, and actually that's quite useful because um, some people will use it as like oh are you from, are you from uh, England or Scotland or uh, Australia sometimes I get Ireland sometimes I get Ireland a fair bit too um, so that opens it up and, and usually sometimes has a connection to England UK Scotland um, usually someone has a connection to that so then they'll also ask me all these questions about the UK and I'm like yeah you should probably go visit but it's better to visit than sometimes to live there it's not always great um, but yeah anyway get on with these questions what little thing do you miss most that you've lost due to the pandemic um, <clears throat> not not so much the little thing I don't know the little thing it's just, it's some ways it's easier to do grocery shopping. Some it's harder. Um, not kind of not knowing, <laughs> not knowing if something's open, or if there's still you know, the hours that list it on the internet are still there. Sometimes it's a bit hard just to nip in and out. Um, but it's one of the big things that I miss. Um, I don't really know. Um, when I'm gonna see my family again? They were supposed to come visit in September, but. Not anymore. Now they've rescheduled for next September. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to go back to the UK. I definitely have to go uh, in twenty twenty three to renew my passport, and then um, just after that I'm gonna apply for a Canadian citizenship. Ship. So it's kind of once I get my citizenship, that's kind of my last uh, obligatory connection to the UK. So. 
but I don't really know what the airlines are going to be like. Um, there might not be cheap flight, cheaper flights to the UK anymore, so um, my ability to go visit might be severely reduced. And my ability for my family to come visit is severely reduced. It's just, it's not something we really uh, consider it ever happening. We, not not necessarily, the, the other airline industry is always a little bit dubious, but just shutting down of international borders in such a way. We have friends in America who we were hoping to visit soon. Um, we, we're like 30 kilometers from the border as well. So um, we were hoping to nip in and out. And, but it, uh, I mean, that, that border might be closed for the next year. Who knows? Who knows what's happening? Um, what little thing do you miss least that you've lost due to the pandemic? I mean, socializing. <laughs> I don't miss. I like my friends. I don't have too many. I like going to meals, but uh, I'm not big on socializing. We're starting to do a little bit more now, like the backyards and stuff. And we have a big house. And so it's pretty easy. Um, but yeah, I just basically want to read and spend all my time with this guy and my wife. So yeah, I don't really miss socializing. And um, unwarranted, unwarranted uh, touching. <laughs> and you know, when people, hands even a handshake, I, hate, I just don't like handshakes. So stupid. Um, hugging, sometimes people just go in and you're hugging before you even know. I, I like to hug people, I like to hug, but Sometimes if it's just like something you don't really know or a bit of a stranger, like go on, it's no, no, I just like you know, little, little hand wave or a little bow, like a little mutual bow. Oh, well, that's my way better. Uh, 14, watch relationship with small talk, hate it like acid, love it, no way competent. Um, I kind of like small talk, I guess. I like love talking about the weather. Typical, typical British person loves talking about the weather. Um, so I don't mind small talk. I quite like small talk. And I love big serious talk with people, you know, you know, riding the world. You, you see one of your friends, ride the world. Um, it's that weird middle ground that I really hate. It's bad. Oh, are people, or if you've just met someone that's asking you loads of deeply personal questions. No, I'd rather not. I'd rather not answer those. Thank you very much. We just met. I'm, I'm quite a private person. <laughs> um, have you ever won money at gambling? Yes. Yes. Uh, won a little bit on the football. Not so much on the football. Horse racing. I know nothing, nothing about horse racing, but I won a little bit on horse racing. But I don't... I never gamble on horse racing anymore. I don't like... I hate going to horse racing. Um... I was just, it was just something for at work and afternoons and, yeah, no, I, 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 horse racing, no, 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 I don't gamble on that. Um, and also, um, where I lived in Dundee had a casino and it was basically after the pubs and clubs shut. I think the pubs would close about 12 and the clubs would close about 2, 2.30. Um, you could go to a casino to drink more because it was kind of considered a private club, I guess. And... So once you're there drinking, and you've already had quite a lot of drinks anyway, um, you yeah, might as well play some roulette. And so I played some roulette. And I won. A little bit. Nothing to really write home about. And I think overall I probably more I probably won more than I lost, but then I just spent on drinks, so I didn't really mind. I never had one of those crazy nights where I won like five hundred pounds or anything. Um, but yeah, I've won money. Uh, number six, do you ever give money or time to charities? Yes, I have done both. Um, probably more money than time. But I've definitely volunteered at stuff. Um, used to give to shelter, homeless charity. Uh, used to give to children's hospital charity, prostate cancer. Um, give, I've given money to Kingston Humane Society. I actually should go to... Do the membership actually for that? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe do the lifelong membership. Kind of. I definitely give money. Definitely give money or time to your local animal shelter. Um, absolutely fantastic. Um, especially anyone, anyone in the humane society. 
uh, network because it's really, really, really good. Um, definitely love my, love my boy. Uh, love all animals. Uh, yeah, he's the best thing that's ever happened to us. Um, yeah. Just lots of, lots of animals that need lots of love and care and money. Uh, especially in these pandemic times, it's a lot harder to run the, the shelters. And they're all the, all the ones that I've seen are doing a fantastic job, especially at Kingston Green Society. But yeah, please give to your local, uh, local chair, uh, humane society, uh, animal shelter. Uh, do you craft knit like knitting, crochet, crocheting, woodworking, pottery throwing? Um, no, I want to get to woodworking though. No. My dad was really good at woodwork, and school and stuff. Um, no, I'm, my wife is a visual artist, so she's the, she's the, uh, the clever one. She got, we got a ton of her art up, and uh, she did me an embroidery. She embroidered us uh, matching hats, which in a different video I'll, 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 I'll show you. Um, yeah, she's the talented one in that regard. I'm, I'm the heavy lifter. I pick things up, I move them around, and I put them down. That's my skill. Generally my skill in life. Um, number 18, do you talk to yourself when you're alone? Yeah, uh, I talk to myself when I'm not alone too, which can cause some um, confusion and problems. Um, I talk to this one all the time too. And my house is basically, sorry, what'd you say? Oh, no, I'm talking to the dog. <laughs> it's basically, that's basically how our conversation is. Or my wife would be like, what did you say to me? I was like, no, I'm just talking to myself. Don't worry, I'm just give myself a little pep talk. <laughs> or I'm just arguing with myself. I love to argue with myself as well. Um, number 19, were you, are you a social queen bee in college? Um, I went to college for a year. And I was social in the sense that I went out and drank a lot. Um, but I don't think I was social in the terms of like, talking meaningfully to a lot of people. I don't know. I have, I am here and there. I, I'm a pretty good friend in the regards of, if I like you, I will spend a lot of time and energy and supporting you. I didn't, I've worked a lot of jobs where I don't have the same time off other people do. It doesn't overlap, so I don't see my friends that much. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not that social. I don't really like talking to people. <laughs> Um, went to a lot of music, I went to a lot of music, like gigs and stuff, and performed in music and stuff, um, so that, and that's very easy to be antisocial at, uh, at music events, because loud music, I can't, I can't, I can never hear anybody over loud music anyway. Oh, number 20, we're there, are you a sunrise or sunset person? Um, I love the sunrise, um, nothing better than when you're camping. Out in the on the wilderness, um, preferably on a on a lake or up a hill, and you get up at first light. You make yourself a nice smoky campfire coffee, <clears throat> and then you just sit and you watch the sun rays, and the day just, just and the day just beginning again. All the wildlife you can just hear going, the birds being all active and singing from you, and yeah favorite time of the day um, and so much just like reading there too it's a great great place to read um, but what what's uh, what's funny now though is um, my usual my usual work day is 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. or later I work in shipping so when the job's done the job's done you, you leave when the job's done you don't you don't leave when the job isn't done so sometimes it can be four o'clock in the morning until you leave but anyway, I don't really see the sunrise or the sunset anymore. Um, because I, I, work, I work in a building with no windows as well, so I don't even, don't even get the passing of time. <laughs> the passing of time is very, just very much uh, a clock watching. <laughs> and Germany, it's all deadlines, right? So you kind of cognizant of the time a lot. Anyway, that was the 20 random tags. Um, Steve, so I hope you enjoy, if you see the Steve, I hope you enjoy seeing the dog, seeing my boy.
Hopefully he doesn't hate it too much. Hopefully maybe he's seen a bit more of him in video. I don't know. It's a bit harder to film down here and there's no books as well. So Yeah, next video we'll have a lot more bookish content. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, do the tag if you want. It's great little random questions to learn about everybody. Not book related. But, you know, this is still... Even though we love to talk about books, this is still kind of lifestyle vlogging, right? So, love this. So yeah, have a great day, everyone. Happy reading. Have a great end to the rest of the year weekend, I guess. And uh, I will see you soon for some more bookish content. Uh, probably do a wrap up soon. So yeah, take care.